So the champions, right? They're these super cool people that function kind of like a cross between the sages of past Zelda titles and the hero himself, Link, in that they're kind of mini heroes who assist Link, but not by just, you know, warping to some remote location and sending their thoughts and prayers to Link and Zelda, but by actually physically helping to beat Ganon to a pulp. And they're awesome. Well, uh, most of them anyway. Each of these champions were selected according to the Creating a Champion literature because they possessed unique abilities. Rivali has the power to create strong updrafts. Daruk has the power to create an impenetrable force field. Mifa has the power to heal wounds. And Urbosa has the power to control lightning itself. And in the case of the present day young Goron hero named Yunabo, who actually is a descendant of Daruk, the force field ability called Daruk's Protection was passed down to him genetically through the champion's bloodline. All well and good, but it begs the question, how did Daruk's protection come to be in the first place? Or any of the powers for that matter? How did Urbosa become able to manipulate lightning or Mifa to reverse the negative effects of physical ailment also known as healing? Did the champions one day all of a sudden just possess these abilities out of the blue? Or is it possible that these abilities were actually created long ago, before the events of the first Great Calamity 10,000 years ago? To answer that question, let's first determine everything we know about the behavior of the champion's abilities. Like I already mentioned before, these abilities are unique to the champions, and in one case, a champion's direct descendant, but are also present in a completely different set of individuals, if you will. You see, in the last theory video I uploaded, I talked about the fact that the Blight Ganons inexplicably are able to use the champion's abilities. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen yet, take a moment and pause this video right here and check it out, because I'm about to expound upon that idea, and it it may sound a little confusing if you haven't heard the first theory yet. I'll place a link to it in the description below and on the screen. Anyway, in a nutshell, I speculated that the Blight Ganons were able to use the champion's abilities because they were the champions themselves, or at least were able to infuse the champions into themselves after having defeated them 100 years ago. And without spoiling anything, the new game Age of Calamity kind of confirms this. Wind Blight Ganon can create tornadoes of wind to send at you. Fire Blight Ganon can straight up use Daruk's protection. Thunder Blight Ganon can can call down lightning like Urbosa, and Water Blight Ganon can create and manipulate water and wields a spear like Mifa. Each of these are clearly inspired by the champions they defeated 100 years ago, but I'm not going to talk about how that may have happened in this video. That was the last video's job. Instead, we have to wonder at what this actually means for the origin of the champions' abilities. The champions and the Blight Ganons have something in common that would allow them both to wield these powers, but I'll get right back to this a bit later on. The first clue, I think, lies in the abilities' names. Rivali's Gale, Mifa's Grace, Daruk's Protection, and Urbosa's Fury. Do you see the pattern here? They're all named after the champions of the second Calamity. If the champions themselves had maybe inherited the abilities due to their bloodlines reaching all the way back to the original four champions of the first Calamity, which we don't have any proof for, it wouldn't make much sense to name the abilities after the champions of the second Calamity. And if they were named based on just whoever currently uses the ability, Ability, then wouldn't Daruk's protection be called Unibo's protection now? This implies that the abilities might not have existed before the Second Calamity's champions did, otherwise their names might have been something else entirely. The second clue is in the abilities' icons. Yes, you heard me correctly, they're icons. Because even though the abilities themselves are named after the champions, for some reason the pictures on the icons are not. Instead, the icons actually depict the divine beasts of their champions. Now here's another question that brings up, why would the abilities' icons depict the beasts, which they are indirectly connected to? Why not a picture of the champions' faces, or maybe even their champions' weapons, to signify the champion they're connected to, and named after? Now on the surface level, this may seem like an insignificant little detail to scrutinize over, but when you're designing a game from the ground up, like Nintendo does with nearly every Zelda game, everything is significant in some way. And in this case, we see that the abilities are tied both in name directly to the champions, but also in appearance to the Divine Beasts, which also implies that the abilities are connected to the Divine Beasts' creators, the Sheikah. In fact, the icons also very closely resemble the spirit orbs that Link receives from the Sheikah monks, and the abilities themselves, when materialized, are shown to be transferred into Link in almost the exact same manner, flying through the air in a metaphysical orb and being absorbed into Link's chest. In both instances, an individual gives Link a power-up that, when absorbed into his body, remains with him forever. An exact parallel of what can only be classified as 
Chica technology. Now let's start piecing some of this together. Excluding Link, we have the second Calamity Champions, the Malice Ganons, and Unibo as every known holder of the champion's abilities. What is the one thing that all of these individuals have in common with each other? The Divine Beasts. The champions piloted them, the Malice Ganons also piloted them, and Unibo is related to a pilot. Now the Divine Beasts are pretty special. They're not like all the other Shika automations. They can't be programmed, but rather must be piloted, like a horse or other animal that you might ride upon. And the method of piloting a Divine Beast is also pretty special, because as we see in-game, even though Link can control certain elements of the beasts from his Sheikah Slate when he's traversing through them, he can't actually take control of the wheel and drive them around. There aren't any interfaces on any of the Divine Beasts that look like they could be a control room either, meaning these things aren't controlled by physical means. I think that we're actually given some hints as to the nature of their controls every time we see a cutscene involving the champion spirits. As you can see, the champions actually talk to the divine beasts, like they were, oh, I don't know, alive, or at least possessing some sort of psychic link to their pilots. And it's more than just that. In Daruk and Mephis cutscenes, they both make comments about wondering how life is going outside of the divine beasts, implying that though they may want to, they can never set foot outside them. This means that since their spirits can only live inside the divine beasts, there's some sort of psychic slash spiritual connection between the beasts and their pilots. Now, why am I going over all this divine beast stuff? Hold on, I'm about to solidify the theory. What if 10,000 plus years ago, when the Sheikah scientists were making all this awesome Sheikah stuff and the divine beasts themselves, they designed them to operate based off of psychic abilities and gave them the ability to connect spiritually to a worthy pilot. And the way that a pilot would know they were chosen is they would be gifted with a special ability from the divine beast itself. The Sheikah are 100% capable of making technology that can determine worthy champions. I mean, the entire world of Hyrule is cluttered with shrine trials. And when the Divine Beasts and other Sheikah technologies were shunned by the Hylian royal family after the first calamity and buried underneath the ground, they eventually powered off and as we know, remained that way for 10,000 years, preventing their champion abilities from being seen by Hyruleans for that entire era. And then, a little over 100 years ago, when the King of Hyrule ordered the excavation of the ancient Sheikah technology, technology, which led to the unearthing and powering on of the Divine Beasts. After 10,000 years of stasis, they once again chose champions worthy of being their pilots and gifted them with their abilities, who we know of today as Urbosa, Daruk, Mipha, and Zelda Falco. Since most records of the Divine Beasts and related Sheikah tech were old legends at this point, the abilities that had previously been forgotten were now heralded as new abilities and then became named after the champions they resided in currently. So basically my theory in a nutshell is that the champions' abilities were created by the Sheikah and given to the Divine Beasts to then give to their chosen champions. I believe that through the naming scheme and overall design of the abilities appearances, this is what makes the most sense. It is also possible that the original champions of the first Calamity were gifted these abilities directly, and these current champions of the second Calamity were simply their descendants whose powers became awoken after the Divine Beasts were unearthed. But either way, even though the game makes it seem like the champions had a choice in whether or not they would accept Zelda's proposal and be pilots, creating a champion directly states that most of them were chosen because of their abilities, meaning they probably didn't have much of a choice either way. Now there are a couple remaining questions to clear up real quick about the abilities before I end this video, such as why would Unibo have Daruk's protection but Riju not have Urbosa's fury, and why can't Link pilot the Divine Beasts after receiving their gifts? For the first one, I think the ability was duplicated when Daruk had children. I mean, it obviously was since Unobo and Link slash Fireblight Ganon both have the ability in present time. The same goes for Riju since Urbosa is stated to be her ancestor as well. But personally, I think that since Riju is only 12 years old, it may be as simple as she just hasn't unlocked the power yet, or doesn't know how to use it, similar to another young girl we know. As for Link not being able to control the Divine Beasts after receiving the abilities, we actually don't really know for a fact that he couldn't pilot them. I mean, it's not like he ever tries to, but even so, I think that after the abilities were given to the champions, they could then be manipulated at will, and it wouldn't affect the spiritual tie between the pilot and beast. Case in point, Daruk's descendant not affecting his tie to Varudanya. But that's all just my theory. What do you guys think? Are the champion's abilities chic attack in nature, or are they some magical something that we don't know of yet? And keep in mind that most magic is just technology that hasn't been explained yet. Let me know in the comments below. 
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This one was a bit more speculation than theory, but it was still a bunch of fun to work on. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like to get it spread around on the merciless algorithm of YouTube. And if you happen to be a fan of The Legend of Zelda and Nintendo in general, maybe even subscribe to the channel to stick around for the next video. I promise you it will be worth it. As always, huge thanks to my fantastic supporters who make my day every single day. If you're interested in helping put food on the table here in the Bandit House and also helping the next video come to life, please feel free to check out that join button listed below or follow the links in the description to find out how. Also down there are links to my social media pages, so come on over and say hi on Twitter. That's all I've got for this one, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit signing out. Peace!